and welcome. You are watching the Straight Beer News, and I am your host, Chris Hardy, and today we're talking about a craft beer lawsuit involving Walmart. A lawsuit was initiated recently on behalf of a beer drinker uh, from Cincinnati, Ohio. He claims that the beer that he bought at Walmart was misrepresented as craft beer, when in fact it's a large um, macro beer um, posing as a, a craft beer and he felt that uh, it was a waste of his money and that he was uh, duped essentially into, into buying the product. Well first let's let's go back a little ways. Uh, about a year ago, early in 2016, Walmart uh, put a new new beer uh, onto their shelves in their craft beer section and it's from a beer, it's from a brewery called Trouble Brewing and that uh, has four different beers uh, the, the brand of the brewery has uh, an amber ale, a IPA, a Belgian white, and a pale ale. And they're available in variety packs or in six packs individually. After a little bit of research into Trouble Brewing, it turns out that there is no Trouble Brewing uh, brewery um, listed in the United States. The name on the application for Trouble Brewing uh, for the, uh, the application to the TTB is WX, or also known as the Winery Exchange. The address listed on the application um, is the address of Genesee Brewing in Rochester, New York. Genesee Brewing itself is owned by a larger uh, organization called North American Breweries, and North American Breweries itself is a subsidiary of a Puerto Rican based corporation with revenues uh, exceeding one billion dollars last year. So that, at this point you may, you may be asking yourself what is the definition of craft beer and that is essentially the, the point behind this whole case is what is craft beer and could this Walmart beer be craft beer even though it's made from a, a, larger, uh, a larger corporation. Well the, the Brewers Association, which is a, a trade association for uh, breweries, has defined for themselves what they think or what they consider is craft beer. And that would mean that it would have to be small, independent, and that it um, is traditional. And what, what that means is small meaning less than 6 million barrels a year, and um, independent meaning that they are less than 25% owned by another corporation, so by some other company. So they must be at least 75% independently owned. The last part is that they must be traditional, which uh, and to their definition means that they, they can't be a brewery that does any flavored malt beverages or uh, alcoholic sodas. They must focus strictly on traditional beers. And lastly, no contract uh, brewing. Uh, any contract brewers are not considered a, uh, a craft beer beer uh, since they don't have their own TTB license. So even though this this beer, this Trouble Brewing branded beer that's hitting the, uh, the Walmart shelves now for the past year uh, isn't under the definition of the BA, the, the, the Brewers Association's definition of craft beer, uh, I think we need to look a lot a larger idea of what craft beer means and in my opinion it, it seems to be just a marketing buzzword kind of like handmade or handcrafted is. It, it, we, we don't actually expect something to be made entirely by hand when we see it maybe on the shelves at our supermarket or Lucky Charms is magically delicious. I, I don't expect there to be any magical deliciousness going on. Uh, it's just a marketing buzzword, something to grab the, the, the consumer's attention. And I, and I think that's kind of where this, this this debate falls in. I don't even know, I don't think that there's any claim by the part of Walmart uh, explicitly saying that this is craft beer. Uh, however, the, the intention clearly is, and it has even been said on their part, that the, uh, they did have the intention of you know, making something that is suitable to that palate, to those consumers, to that taste, and also that uh, the, the presentation uh, of the, the, the boxes, the cartons, the, the cans, the bottles are all labeled and look kind of uh, avant-garde or look kind of interesting and st stand out or maybe could look comparable to the, the products that we are used to seeing for, for craft beer. The, the claim in the lawsuit also is a part that uh, this, this man says that he has wasted his money or that uh, Walmart is kind of 
bottling cheap product as a way to um, sell it at a higher value than what it's really worth. And I don't know if there's any truth to that. I mean, if anything, it seems that they are undercutting the prices of the, the beers, uh, of the craft beer that they sell otherwise. So it seems cheaper than the normal craft beers. And for the money, for, and for the taste, it may be right up about on par with what you would expect. I, I'm not sure. I haven't, haven't not tried it myself. Uh, but it does seem kind of like a, a, a waste of a lawsuit. Something similar has been um, already decided about a year ago or sometime last year. Somebody um, put up a lawsuit in front of uh, Blue Moon saying that it was owned by you know Miller Coors and that it's not really a craft beer per se and that they were swindled into thinking that it was craft when it's actually owned by a larger conglomerate and, and that one was thrown out it, it there, there was no award given for that and I, I expect something similar for this case so I, I don't expect there to be any settlement any award given but it does kind of once again spur the conversation of you know what is craft beer if there is any possible uh, contribution to the to the discussion it would be that you know trouble brewing while maybe it doesn't exist in the US there is a trouble brewing that's in the UK so maybe there would be some copyright name there or trademarking that uh, infringement possibly I don't know the other thing that maybe sets this uh, this uh, lawsuit apart is the level of, uh, of detail to uh, obscure the proper ownership of the of the brewer of the brand of the trouble brewing so it's many layers deep there was this new brand set up called the winery exchange as I mentioned and its address wasn't listed to anything other than the Genesee brewing so there's a lot of deception involved and deception that you don't typically see on things that are private labeled so things from Trader Joe's uh, you will see you know who the brewer is on the bottle or on the label itself and you know who brewed that and Trader Joe's just slapped its own label on it it seems to be a couple layers more involved than that um, deceptively on the part of Walmart to kind of obscure who's actually brewing it and is it really craft and kind of leave the consumers in the dark a little bit so maybe not so forthright and honest but I don't think there's anything illegal about this at all so I would expect this to be kind of an open and shut case well, that'll be it for this time, guys. Thank you once again for watching. This has been the Straight Beer News, and I've been your host, Chris Hardy. Don't forget to check me out on the, on the social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can also find me on Untapped. If you're there, you can find me there as well. All that information where to find me is below in the description of the video. And if you could please, if you like what I do, if you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, I would appreciate that. Also, if you could subscribe, that would be great. That way you don't miss any episodes in the future. You can find them right at the top of your feed in YouTube, and you can watch more of me there. So the, the subscribe button should be coming up. It's the circular uh, Old English style S. Click on that and it'll take you to the subscribe. Thanks for watching. Until next time.